Denver 911, what's the address of your emergency? I don't understand. What language do you speak? Somali. Okay, what's your name? Translator, one moment. Hello again, everybody, and welcome to DPD TV. I'm Sergeant Warnicky, continuing our three part series on call times. In this episode, we're going to present some of the interesting challenges that languages present in getting help to you. Code 10 covered down to Civic Center Park. For Stella Ashuba, it's just a regular day at the office. Take Hampton to I-25. In her seat, oftentimes, emotions run high. I think that it's frustrating sometimes because you have to deal with people who are in very bad situations, so they're very stressed out, and it's hard to get information from them sometimes. Ma'am. Ma'am, tell me where you're at. Large cities mean large challenges. Denver is so big, so we have a lot of diversity in the populations. Operators have access to a language line, which takes time to get an interpreter on the phone. In some cases, figuring out which language a person is even speaking prior to finding an interpreter takes even more. It works pretty fast when you use language line for something like Spanish, and we're, we also have a few people who speak Spanish. Ashuba is bilingual. I speak Russian. Add to the situation, the people calling oftentimes are in distress, but figuring out where they are is paramount. What's your address? Do you live in Denver? It's obviously that causes a delay in response because if we don't know where we're going, we can't send anybody out. Technology helps Ashuba try to locate people. It's going to show the closest cell tower, but you can get a pretty good view of exactly what part of town they're in. And whether in English or Russian, Ashuba and her fellow call takers are on standby for whatever comes their way. Thank you, bye. There's yet another factor that influences call times, and that's staffing. We'll talk about that in part three. Thanks for watching.